Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got an affordable brake barrel and scope combo on test in the shape of the Umarex UX Patrol. But before that, we're back out hunting with Andy Watkins and he's setting his sights on crows, magpies and pigeons. come down to the farm today just to thin out a few of the birds. Uh, the gamekeeper's rung me up and he said that the young pheasants are going to be coming on soon so I won't actually be able to have as much roaming as I have now um, and to do pest control on. Uh, when, the, when the pheasants come in I won't be able to come because the shots of the air rifles and the disturbance uh, can, can spook them and cause all sorts of problems. Um, so. I'm making the most of it now. I'm here and there's a little bit about, there's some pigeons and some crows. Uh, I've seen a few squirrels running around as well. So we could have anything today. Um, and the way I'm going to work it is I've got this S200. Now I've, I haven't had this rifle for very long. I've probably had it about, I'd say about three or four weeks. And it's, it's so, so accurate. I am in love with this rifle. And um, it's far, far more accurate than a lot of other guns in my cabinet. Um, so on top I've got a Hawk Air Max, uh, on the back, for those of you interested, I've got an Eagle Vision uh, scope mount, uh, scope cam adapter with my iPhone on the back so I can film through the scope and get the shots that way. Uh, this I find works really well for me, it's a nice setup, nice and light, um, could probably deal with a sling but that's for another day. So I'll chuck my head net on now and head into the woods and see if we can see if we can shoot anything. Uh, for the gamekeeper. After a quick recce, Andy decides on a spot that has produced the goods for him before. I know from past experience that the tree behind me, um, just the other side of the woodland, uh, is a really good city, city tree and you often find um, corvids go and just roost up in there for a little while so I'll give it, give it 20 minutes sitting down here and um, see if anything pops up. Hopefully it does and we'll be able to put this this gun to good use. It's no surprise that this is a productive spot. The shelter created by those evergreens provides a prime roosting site right through the year. So as you can see here to the right of me we've got a little a little spot where I've sat before. Um, I find it really comfortable and really productive. I use the backrest uh, I use the tree as a backrest so it's nice and comfortable and I use the branches coming out from the tree as a rifle rest so it's really solid and I'm confident from shooting in this position so uh, yeah I'm gonna, gonna get set up now Shooting through a screen to capture scope cam footage isn't easy at the best of times so the support provided by that well positioned branch should prove very handy. All settled in now, uh, give it 20 minutes, see if anything crops up. If not we'll move on to a different location and see if we have any more success. But I'm fairly confident here, like I said before it's been, a, it's been good here previously. literally just flew in um, put the camera on but I was too slow I don't know if you saw it from the angle that the camera is that up there but um, yeah very close and it's not long until Andy gets a proper chance to put his air arms to good use while also managing to capture the action on his scope cam
well that's one crow in the bag flew in it's uh, laced 51 yards and just went straight for a chest shot I was going for a head shot and then he put his head back and I could just see a, a clean target of where I needed to land that pellet so as you saw uh, in the footage hopefully um, the pellet impacted right in the middle there and he was dead instantly so we're going for the retrieve now um, the crack of this rifle is pretty loud because it's an air stripper rather than uh, a silencer on the end um, so I don't think anything else will be coming in for a little while uh, so we'll pick him up and just make sure he is absolutely dead but from that shot there's no no getting up from that That was a long shot, too far for a lot of people to consider tackling with a sub 12 foot pound air gun. But Andy is a very experienced target shooter and he knows his limits and those of his equipment. And that's confirmed by this clean kill. Got a very easy retrieve there, it's just, um, just fell right on an opening. Um, but I hit him right where I aimed, just there in the chest. And dropped absolutely instantly and was stone dead by the time we came to him. The um, reason we're shooting these is again the local crops around here are suffering and there's a very large number of crows as rookeries and, and nests all along these woodlands here so the moment, as, as many as we knock down uh, the better. Um, that's another one less to be doing damage. Um, so yeah I think uh, I think we've had our fill from this tree now and um, we've been here a little bit of a while now actually a bit longer than planned uh, it's been about 45 minutes so not the most productive spot but we'll just have a stalk around have a bit of a mooch see if there's anything else anywhere else You can see the brow of the hill behind me. Um, over this bit of corn, there's all often a lot of pigeons just roosted up in, in one of the trees. Uh, so I'm just going to make my way over slowly there now, um, in the hope of getting something. Andy is using classic stalking tactics, staying very close to cover in an effort to conceal his outline, and it looks like it's worked. Well, I just shot that pigeon out of the one of the trees behind me. It was a lay 61 yards, so it needed two and three quarter mil that's older, I think it was. And I tried to go for a headshot. Um, I'm not quite sure whether I did or not. I'll have a look at the footage. But um, he just dropped down into the corn, so I'm going to have a look and see if I can pick him up now. Um, the corn is pretty big, pretty well, fairly, fairly high up now. But um, I still have a good search around for him. I'm pretty confident. Another very long shot there, certainly beyond my capabilities. It looked like a clean kill, but Andy is struggling with the retrieve. Well, the corn's a fair bit higher up here than it was down there, and I just can't find that pigeon. I've had a look, uh, a fair bit of a look now, um, off camera as well, and I can't find it anywhere. I might need to bring the dog down here later and see if he can sniff it out, but I don't want to trample in and do more damage than really is needed for one pigeon. Um, you'll have to go to the fox I think if the dog can't find him later. But I've driven over to another one on permissions now and it's just down the road from where we were just just at and um, there's quite a lot of activity around here. I haven't actually been here for a while. Um, it's one of those that I've just overlooked over the last few weeks because of the pheasant shoot. Um, the pheasants are coming on here a little bit later on in the year so um, I'm going to focus my efforts here now more Anyway, um, there's a, a bit of activity as I drove down on the field, so I'm just going to park myself underneath that hedge and just see if anything shows up. I've only got three quarters of an hour or so before I need to be heading home, um, but like I say, I've got the scope come on, as with before, and, uh, and we'll just wait and see. Well, I'm just going to sit down here. I've got a little bit of a view of the field and uh, also a bit of a tree, so anything that comes in within about 45 yards or so I should be able to have a clean shot off at it. One of the 
advantages of having your phone as a scope cam is you get to see all the notifications as they come in. <laughs> Better put that on silent now. Hushing his phone clearly gave Andy stealth a welcome boost, and he soon has another Corvid in his sights. Well, that magpie dropped straight away. Uh, it looked like it was quite a young one, so it didn't have a lot of meat on it. Um, so I went for a heart shot because I knew that the pellet wasn't battling through um, a lot of tough, tough muscle. Uh, so it looks like he dropped clean, but we'll just go and make sure now. And um, we'll head over there and yeah, have a pick him up and, and see where we got him. So we got him with a nice clean heart shot. Um, dropped stone dead. It is only a young one as I thought. Um, but again, another one just to take out, uh, so the farmer will be happy. Um, this was a flying visit, as I said, so I'm afraid it's uh, time's up now. Um, yeah, ideal days past controlling. Cheers. Some impressive long range shooting from Andy there, but remember he is a very proficient shot, so please don't tackle anything like that yourself unless you really know what you're doing. And now it's time for the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Mixed gender team air rifle and pistol have taken another step towards full inclusion in the Olympic schedule. The two new events are going to take place at the World Cup final this year. Qualification takes place just like all the other final events, with the best countries from the World Cup stages this year getting a place. That means Great Britain is likely to miss out. Should the final be a success, the two events are likely to replace prone rifle and men's pistol in the Olympics for good. Animal rights groups have called for air gun licensing to be imposed in England and Wales, just like it is in Scotland. The RSPCA backed an online petition that describes air guns as deadly weapons and says a lack of legislation is to blame for the use of air guns to injure non-target animals, something that is already an offence. Air gun licensing came into effect in Scotland at the start of this year, but it's estimated that, owing to delays in processing applications, thousands of shooters are still waiting for their certificate to arrive. The latest stats reveal that rural crime cost the UK £39 million last year, and that's set to grow a further 20% this year if the current rate holds. Criminals are targeting quads, pickups, tools and animals, forcing land managers and pest controllers to invest in high-tech gear to fend them off. The Countryside Alliance said this would not come as a surprise to the many rural businesses and communities who are at the sharp end of these statistics. And finally, Excitement is mounting for the Midland Game Fair, which comes to Western Park on the 16th and 17th of September. As always, the greats of the British air gun industry will convene on the event, with a host of scope, clothing and accessory manufacturers joining them as well as retailers. And the European Field Target Championship provides an attraction for the top-level competition shooters. Get your tickets now from midlandgamefair.co.uk. That was the Airgun Show News. This week's review gun is an affordable Springer that comes complete with a zoom scope and mounts. It's the Umarex UX Patrol from John Rothery and you can pick this kit up for £139.95. The modern styling of this air gun may not go down very well with traditionalists but it is very practical. The synthetic stock should stand up well to knock some bumps and it helps to keep overall weight down to under 3 kilos even with the scope mounted. That tactical looking ambidextrous stock has quite a long forend and the grooves towards the front make for an improved hold. The thumb hole setup 
is big enough to accommodate my large hands and the steep rake of the pistol grip makes for good trigger attack. There's a rubber recoil pad at the rear of the butt and it does a good job of absorbing recoil from the spring powered action. Although the cheek piece looks quite low because of that thumb hole arrangement, it's actually perfectly high enough to ensure good alignment between eye and scope. In fact, I think it would be even better suited to slightly higher mounts. At 103 centimetres long, this isn't a particularly short air gun, and its stock appears to have been designed for adult shooters. That said, it should be perfectly manageable for shooters of most sizes, and I reckon it would be really well suited to teenagers. Overall balance is fairly good, and it feels very comfortable in the shoulder. The finish of the metalwork is up to standard for a gun of this price point, and I really like the protective coating on the barrel. It matches the finish of the stock really well and offers a good degree of protection, not just against the elements, but also against bumps and scuffs. One very obvious feature of the barrel is that integral tapered silencer. Because it's molded, I can't get into it to see what components it actually features, but it does a reasonable job of stifling muzzle crack. And combined with the extra grip provided by that matte finish, it makes for a very effective cocking aid. The cocking stroke doesn't feel or sound unduly rough, and the leverage provided by that barrel means it doesn't take a lot of strain. The test gun is turning out a muzzle energy of just under six foot pounds. That relatively low power is another reason why this gun's pretty easy to cock, and it lends itself very well to backyard plinking. I have to say that the trigger is a lot better than I'd expected to find on an affordable combo like this. It's a two-stage unit, and although the second stage is a little heavy, it's predictable and there's hardly any creep. I'd say it's set up just about perfectly for a young shot or novice to shoot safely. The safety catch is located at the rear of the cylinder and it engages when the gun is cocked, which is another nice touch. You push it forwards when you're ready to shoot and it can't be reset without re-cocking the gun once it's pushed off. There are no open sights, but the UX Patrol comes supplied with a 3 to 7 by 20 telescopic sight and mounts. Optical quality is good enough for plinking and the small turrets, which require a screwdriver to adjust, turn with positive clicks. The mounts aren't particularly robust, but because of that low muzzle energy, there's not a great deal of kick and I haven't experienced any problems with them creeping yet. I think that's all of the Umarex UX Patrol's features covered. Let's head across to the range and see what it shoots like. Right, well that was a five shot group from the 177 calibre test gun and I shot that over 15 metres which I think, given its relatively limited power, is about its optimum range. Now, looking at that group, it may not be a competition winner but it's easily accurate enough for tin toppling and it should be a really fun gun to use on the plinking range. 
This one's had a couple hundred shots put through it and it is still dieseling a bit and I'd expect its performance to settle down a little bit more once it's had some more shots put through it. But um, the easy cocking stroke makes it a real pleasure to shoot and there really, really isn't a great deal of kick. To sum up, I think the Umarex UX Patrol would make a brilliant backyard air gun. It's not too noisy and its limited power makes it well suited to shooting in the confines of a garden. Also, that tough finish means you don't have to worry too much about it getting knocked about if you're using it to introduce a youngster to the sport. All in all, I think it's a great little package for the money. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine. Packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.